Oh, yeah. So Diddy's son. Diddy's son has come out as a gang member, man. He dropping the rakes. Um, One thing about Diddy's son that I've learned, man, and I did not know this, man. But as you guys know, I know some people in New York, man. I I I, I go to New York um some from time to time, man. Um Diddy's son is a whole gangster, man. Like Diddy's son is a real gangster. Like he got when I say like a little, he got he's out there. Diddy's son is out there. People in New York who know, people in the know, in New York who know, know. Diddy's son is a real live gangster. He ain't no joke. He not like a studio gangster or a wannabe. He really with it. And so is his pops, man. His pops is a real gangster. Diddy is the most dangerous dude out there, man. Diddy been through more stuff than all them guys, man. Than all the tough guys that you want to talk about. All the tough guys you you talk about, Diddy done put in more work. <laughs> Diddy got more. <laughs> Diddy done been around longer, put in more work. <laughs> so I look on the internet and I see. <laughs> yeah. My man got so many tattoos. This shit is just crazy, man. Jesus, I blame Mike Tyson for this shit, man. And Gucci Mane. So I look on the internet and I see Puff Daddy Son come out of GDK. Bro, it's not a good time while your daddy fighting all these allegations and I agree with that. I agree with that a hundred percent, man. I agree with that a hundred percent, man. It's not a good time because now people are gonna look into the sun's people are gonna look into the sun and they're gonna be like, whoa, that's who he rolls with. Whoa, like that's his that's his crowd. These are his associates. Cause he rolls with a rough crowd. Um did his son rolls with a um a rough crowd, man. You know, he rolls with a pretty rough crowd. But, um, yeah. <laughs> wow. That this was, yeah, this was not a good time. Call that man old yellow queef <laughs> That was stupid, man. Um, okay. Bro, it's not a good time while your daddy fighting all these allegations and crazy stuff he got going on with him right now. Why would you even try to involve yourself into a GDK movement or anything? I mean, you was born famous and rich and famous like what you know what though the thing about that though about the whole everybody only people from the gutter can be in gangs and only people you know your mother crackhead and your daddy in jail but your mother she you know she a maid and your daddy hanging up hanging off the back of a trash truck and you live in the projects, that's the only people that can be in gangs. You got to understand, black culture 
gangs and cliques and crews is part of black culture. Diddy's son, he he's 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 participating in black culture. Okay, he's participating in black culture. He's a young man. He's rich and he's he's not even famous because he has a low profile. But he's rich. He grew up rich, but he's out in the world, man. He's fooled. Diddy's son is fooled if he don't handle himself. Being Diddy's son, having jewelry, having nice cars, he's fooled. He's a whole plate if he doesn't know how to handle himself. So I, I kind of see that a little different now than I used to, man. If he don't know how to handle himself and he can't protect himself and he can't strike fear in the fucking people's hearts, other people his age, black people his age, he, what is he in his mid twenties? So if you're if you're a black guy in your mid twenties, and you got and you, you you go to the club and you got nice cars and nice chains, nice clothes, and you've got a people know you got nice things, you need to be able to strike fear in people's hearts. You need to be able to kill people. You need to be able to hurt people. You need to be able to immediately take action in a violent manner. So I don't see any problem with Diddy's son being um, participating in black culture. But I, I wish he hadn't done it. I wish he hadn't dropped them rakes right now and um, dropped the gang signs right now with his dad and all types of shit because now people are going to look into his life. Bro. It's not a good time while your daddy fighting all these allegations and crazy stuff he got going on with him right now. Why would you even try to involve yourself into a GDK movement or anything? I mean, you was born famous and rich and famous. Like, what are you doing, uh, King Combs? And the crazy part is somebody called me and asked me, with you on the phone, you forgot we was on the phone? And you asked me, should you do drill music? I said, bro, why would you do drill music? You don't even come from the streets. You don't come from none of that. You was like, you right. Yeah, but did he... <laughs> Diddy's son hangs with a rough crowd, man. He hangs with a rough crowd, man. It's a thought that counts. Thank you, baby. GDK. It's a thought that counts. Thank you, baby. GDK. <sighs> He's participating in black culture, man. Diddy's son is participating in black culture. Black culture is uh, when you're, especially when you're a young person, a lot of that is about violence. <laughs> if you can't be violent, if if other black people don't know that you can, you can call some niggas you can call some niggas if some, if some other niggas don't know that you can call some niggas you might have a problem Niggas need to know that you could call some niggas, especially if you did his son. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tommy G. Today, we get an inside look into the GDs. GD folk! 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 GD
I got all my D got in my bed, nigga. Uh, beefing about a bitch, oh, that she sad, nigga. Uh, beefing on the gang, it's time to crack. I kind of like breaking out this shirt. Yeah, man, that's Did I make official, a good choice? Yeah, that's the official season block Taliban. Big dog got an ET shirt. Yeah. <laughs> The origin story of the Gangster Disciples takes us to Chicago in the 1960s during an era of civil rights and social unrest. In 19... During an era of civil rights, oh, they about to do the whole, the gangs was started to protect the community bullshit. I don't believe in none of that shit. I believe the gangs was, was started to protect these niggas who live here from other niggas who live over there. Press one. 64, 13 year old Larry Hoover joined a small gang called the Supreme Gangsters. This crew beefed with a group called the Black Disciples, a squad led by a man named David Barkston. After a five year gang war, the two groups announced a ceasefire, and under the leadership of Larry Hoover, these two groups united to form the Gangster Disciples. Growing quickly, they recruited heavily from jails and prisons and eventually established themselves in many states around the country. Supporters of the Gangster Disciples say that GDs are a community group that focus on growth and development of their. <laughs> Members of the Gangster Disciples were involved in community based activities such as feeding the homeless, stop the violence rallies, and community fundraisers were simultaneously involved in narcotics trafficking and frauds. <laughs> I think all that other stuff is a front. I think all that other stuff is a front. Is a front for their for their criminal activities. I don't. I believe those guys are hardcore, unadulterated, unabashed thugs and criminals. I don't believe none of that feeding the homeless shit. None of it. I believe they're hardcore, unadulterated hoodlums, thugs, criminals, gangsters, gangbangers, and that's their. That's the life that they want to lead. I feel like anything else they do is is just a, you know, a show. They're like giving away turkeys on Thanksgiving. I think that's just, just the, you know, that's just putting a, it's like when politicians go and kiss babies and shit. Disciples say that GDs are a community group that focus on growth and development of their members, and that important to the group is community service and doing things like feeding the homeless and doing back to school drives for the kids. However, the U.S. Department of Justice says that the Gangster Disciples and their 30,000 members nationwide are a criminal. 30,000 members. Look at this shit. Damn, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. This is like a disease. This is a disease. This is a disease, my man. This is a disease, Colorado. They're in Wyoming. They're all over Wyoming. God damn, Gladys. Shit, this is a disease. This right here is a fucking disease. They're everywhere. Our criminal enterprise involved the racketeering, the sale of narcotics, and violent activities. I head to Kansas City, Missouri to attend a regional cookout of the Gangster Disciples and tap in with rapper Young Blue is my guide for this journey. Let's hit the streets. Today, folks, we're going to be taking an inside look at the Gangster Disciples, which feels crazy to even be saying that we're going to be doing that, talking to folks and learning what it's like to be part of the crew, part of the organization, what they stand for, what they're about. But I think in some way, everyone is part of a gang or wants to be part of a gang. And a gang has a bad connotation. Everyone wants belonging, they want tribe, they want brotherhood. Different people have different ways of building that. I had a big sense of that with my wrestling team in high school and college. I think it's lonely being a man in this world. <laughs> yeah, your wrestling team, man. I mean, I get what he's saying, but uh, I get I get why he's thinking like a glider. And this is one thing that, that, that about gliders 
I don't know whether it's arrogance or naivete. Press one for arrogance, two for naivete. They think everybody thinks like them. Different people have different ways of building them. I had a big sense of that with my wrestling team in high school and college. I think it's lonely being a man in this world right now. Like when you're a grown ass man, you graduate from high school or college, like your community shrinks. And I think being a man is a lonely experience for a lot of people. And I'm always interested in how people fight against that. So we're going to meet with a Kansas City chapter of the Gain Your Disciple organization. So first up, Young Blue Spot, we're going to talk to the group, get a feel for them, meet them, and then we'll go to the big organization. A lot of y'all saying is both. Yeah, I could I could see that. It, it could it could be both. I could see it be both. Like, yo, that's with sons are forming gangs for for there's nothing about that. It's violent. They live they, anywhere they are is going to be violent. Super violent. And you you need you need protection from violence, other violent sons. And you also need a crew to unleash your violence on the community with. Those are the reasons. It has nothing to do, I guess, camaraderie and sense of belonging. Yes, I think those things play in, but I don't think those are the um, the base reasons. I think the base reasons is, yo, it's fucking hell over here. Right, get down or lay down. I need to, I need to get get with these dudes, man, so they so they don't eat me. Or them other dudes over there don't eat me. Or if they do try to eat me, I can I got some people with me. I think a lot of that. I think I think what he's saying has a piece to do with it. But I think a lot more has to do with just the carnal base urges of self-preservation. And also the the the, the inner craving for criminality. That sons possess. Meeting. We'll see you there. Folks, we are at an undisclosed location in Kansas City, Missouri. And fellas, what are we doing today? Man, we taking them behind the scenes, man. We with the guys disciples today, man. Growth and development fresh at Kansas City Six Block Taliban with the guy out to this barbecue, man. Y'all finna see what it's like. Wait, the so we're invited to the barbecue? Yeah, man, you invited to the barbecue. <laughs> yes. Okay, so fellas, what is happening today? Like, we have people around the country coming in, around the region, man, and what's going a, on? We got a couple of different cities within Missouri coming. So we got St. Louis. We got a couple of our guys from Springfield. A couple of our little brothers from uh, Warrensburg, Missouri. We got some guys from Charleston. You know what I'm saying? They coming out today, fellowship and politics and kicking. You did? Okay, and you guys are about to go to a meeting that we're not allowed to attend? Yes, most definitely. What the hell is that about? Why can't I come? Man, it's confidential information. Confidential. We don't have to give any classified information, but is there like a general theme you guys are covering today? We don't discuss that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't know that. Okay, so you have, like, this is like top secret information that only members have access to. Facts. So, I question Are you guys looking for additional members? And also, would you let white boys from Milwaukee join? Not looking for no extra members. And no. <laughs> <laughs> These fellas are going to take care of business. Then we're going to join them for a barbecue. Continue to pound that like button. Take the, take the $10 challenge. Support this channel. PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat. Light it up. We coming to you every night. I'm going to drop the link in a little bit. Asking questions. Have a good old time. Anything else to add to that, fellas? No, sir. No, sir. That's it. No, sir. All right. Moment of truth. They got done with their secret meeting. They summoned us. They said we can come by. So here we go. GDs.
against your disciples. Let's talk to the people and see what they think about gangs. When you hear the word gang, what does that make you think? Gang can be anything in a group of people. Maybe violence? Well, usually it's gang violence. You usually think about that. Probably California. I mean, with all like your Hells Angels, Bloods, Crips, stuff like that. Gangs to me is a group of people coming together to establish some form of power. Have you ever heard of the Gangster Disciples? Of course. No. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I have not. Okay. I've heard the name, but I don't know exactly what it is. If you had a brother that said, hey man, I'm going to go join a gang, what would you think? I don't, I'd tell him no. Yeah? But I'd ask him, well, what gang? Because, I mean, you could have the chess club gang. I mean, it's... <laughs> Depends on what the gang represented. I don't know. We would have... I don't know. I don't know. I probably wouldn't be too happy with him. I would hope that he wouldn't be leading down that path where he, he felt he had to be in a gang like that. We're about to go to a barbecue with a bunch of gangster disciples. Any advice you got for me? <laughs> I don't know. You know, good luck to you. <laughs> Take care. Be careful, show him respect, and he should be fine. Be respect. How do you think my outfit is? <laughs> respect. <laughs> you look comfortable. <laughs> Y'all brothers enjoy your day. We're debuting a beautiful shirt today. Big dogs guy. It was designed by a man that's been featured in Vogue, collaborated with Levi's. Like I'm pulling out all the stops to give you guys good shit. So if you want to join my gang, Big Dogs Gotta Eat, TommyGMiggy.com. I'll see you guys there. We got blue, we got black, rock the gang. It's us versus mainstream media. First, a message from our sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. You gotta pick the right players to make Man, posted at Slope Park, man, with the guys, man. Y'all okay. know what's going on. And what's what's happening here? We got barbecue, we man. got a cookout. Yeah, we got a family cookout with the guys, you know what I'm saying? The membership, we just hear politics and fellowship, and you know what I'm saying? Building camaraderie with the guys. Man. <laughs> what made you join this organization? I wanted to be a part of something that was going to be productive. I started this organization when I was a young man, and I saw the guys getting together with the younger people, really keep them out of trouble, protect them from the streets, drug crime, stuff like that. I've been in this organization since I've been like 15 or 46 years old. And what are the biggest benefits you've gotten? from being in the GDs. It taught me how to be a man. Yeah. It taught me how to raise my family. Principles that we stand on that conducive to the acceleration of any man, mm -hmm. any neighborhood, any organization. Matter of fact, I got two of my sons here with yep. me today. They are part of this organization. Yep. And as a father, I wouldn't put them in nothing that would be harmful to them. So what does it mean to be a man? I feel like there's questions. People don't even know what women are anymore. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we're having interesting conversations in society, but what does it mean to be a man? Man, standing on your beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Standing on what you believe and standing firm on it. You know what I'm saying? Not letting it. <laughs> They're speaking in a bunch of vagaries. Press one. They're speaking in a bunch of vagaries. Everything's so vague. You know, and that's if, if, if the four day laws of power talks about that. Be vague. You know what I'm saying? Don't be specific. You know, it is it, it, talking in a bunch of vagaries to try to make it seem like it's more than what it is. These guys are gangsters and hoodlums from terrible neighborhoods. Who probably most likely have done plenty of jail time and put in plenty of work on the streets and hang on the streets and hang in hoods and involved in neighborhood hood BS and street drama and scandals and all these things. But by being vague and, you know what I'm saying, making it seem so, you know, um, mystical, anybody change your mind, you did? about how you feel about what you feel about. What made you motivated or interested to join this organization? I joined it when I was 12 years old. You know, like brother said, you know, it's a lifestyle. It's how we move, it's how we walk, it's how we talk, mm -hmm. it's how we conduct ourselves. So I'm curious about the symbols. What is what does this mean? Man, that's the Star of David, man, you know what I'm saying? That means love, life, loyalty, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Is that a Jewish thing? 
my it's a GD thing. GD thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But do Jewish folks also wear the same stuff? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So we we talked to a couple of people, like citizens, and I asked them, "What do you think about the word gang or organization?" And a lot of people had a bad connotation to that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Because, man, when you say gang, that's some treacherous. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? That's why when you ask us, "Oh, what are you? Are you in the gang?" Nah, yeah. we correct you with the organization. Organization. Time. You know what I'm saying? It sounds more friendly too. You dig? On, on the drive here, what I was thinking about is you could argue that McDonald's is a hamburger cartel. Mm -hmm. You know, past. <laughs> McDonald's is a hamburger cartel. Make America fat. Yep. You could say that Big Pharma yep. is a drug gang organization. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys agree with those thoughts? Yep. Yeah. Okay, right. so I guess it's all just how you think about yeah, it. It depends on the uh, point of view of how you're coming with it. Then, okay, yeah. that's what it is. And gangs hurt maliciously. We don't do that. Yeah, and then, like, another more. thing, what you do as an individual reflect on the whole organization. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So we hold you accountable for that, like, the most. So I feel like that's a big piece that's missing from a lot of places I've visited is accountability. Like, it's kind of like young guns are just running wild, doing whatever, whatever the hell that's they want. Mm -hmm. That's a gang. That's, that's a, gang. a gang. That's a gang. Everybody's that's organized. Everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. We're not a gang because we're all organized. Really yeah. So what does the code of conduct look yeah. like? Like, what can get you in trouble or what makes you, like, stealing, raping? Yeah. Well, we don't do none of that. And then you want me to teach you one thing while you out Let's here? Let's do it. Let's do it. If what you notice about everybody's shoes out here, ain't nobody wearing Crocs. Well, can't do that. What? What's, did I just violate the code? Yeah, you, you breach the security right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, if somebody want to fight you right now, and then you got on these. You gonna slip up out of here? Hey, he got him in sport mode for y'all. Yeah. Right now, can exactly. we make an exception if it's in sports mode? If it's in sports mode, you might get away. Depending on what my brother say, you know what I'm saying? My brother don't be tolerating the breaching of security. It is. Okay, so I made my first violation. <laughs> Am I kicked out? Do I have to go home? Or no, I'm okay. take his mouth shots yeah. real quick, folks. <laughs> so that's another thing is I've heard like a lot of negativity about like nine to five jobs. Like a lot of people hate on that shit. What you know do you why? think about that? You, look, let me tell you something. Let me, I'm going to tell you some real stuff, bro. I'm going to keep it 100. I used to be like that. I used to be thinking, oh, the lame niggas is the one with nine to fives until I went to prison, bro. I did 10 years, bro. Wasting my time they see my daughter none of that no nah, i was the lame bro because i'm just sitting here with my daughter getting raised outside by somebody else bro mm -hmm. it, it, it's pointless bro mm -hmm. you know, input and the input on that you say why people don't want to work nine to five yeah because at the same time patience and discipline is key yeah. you know what i'm saying if you ain't got patience or discipline you can't you ain't nothing you feel me yeah you know what i'm saying you should be able to want to go work that nine to five to provide for yourself your family your child your family yeah. whoever you know what i'm saying even if you want to look out for people at the homeless you know what i'm saying you will, you will walk past somebody that ain't doing as well as you, you feel me? You got money in your pocket, you might give it to them because they need it more than you. You feel me? It's all about discipline and patience. A lot of people, bro, don't understand slow money, bro, but slow money is the good money. Because fast money going to get you gone, bro, because you're going to spend yeah. it just as fast as you get it. What is the organization's stance on fatherhood? I've noticed a few guys talk about the importance of that. If you lacking in your child life, man, this ain't the good organization for you because we're going to hold you accountable for that. Because, you know what I'm saying, this organization yeah. produce positive, productive people. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't taking care of your priorities, man, this ain't for you, for real. Well, say, my brothers can't protect their own children, now you can protect your own brother. So, how has being in this organization impacted your life? Man, you know, let me tell you something, bro. Before I was GD, let me tell you something. I probably run around, bro, act crazy, breaking people's houses, stealing cars, all that. But let me tell you something, bro. My dad, he's not GD. He's not. He's Crip. Mm-hmm. It's a difference, bro. Let me tell you something. <laughs> my dad ain't a GD. My dad is a Crip. Man. Oh, King David. Mm, 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 mm. I ain't even gonna hold you, man. Um, so this is Listen, I can see, I can see how, you know, that could be attractive to people who, especially guys that like, like Diddy's son that aren't like from the streets, from the streets, because they talking all that organization stuff, 
But let's be serious, man. Let's be serious. These are gangbangers, man. Period, point blank, end of story. <laughs> Don't pass go. These are gangbangers. GD show you how to be a man, bro. It show you how to, you got to stand on principles and laws. Because a lot of people, bro, that's why they don't want to be GD. That's why they want to be in other games. Because you can't stand on law, bro. You can't, because at the end of the day, if I'm trying, you got something nice on, I'm trying to take it off you, bro. Well, I can go do the same thing you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't gotta rob you for that, but they gonna make sure I don't rob you for that. Mm -hmm. Cause they gonna put, they gonna stand on my line. Like, yep. hey, bro, you know you ain't put guy. Yeah, holler us real yep. quick, bro. Does anyone here have bars they got spit or they? Yeah, come on, get him. Go on here, spit some shit. I came a long way from shaving rocks and pushing corners. There ain't no bars in a minute. They say my rhymes was over. Ain't no stopping me. Nigga being patient just made them potent. Had to cater to my family, but I think I cooked that over. Had to work up on myself to get my demons back in order. Kept my dreams for little things. Reality was getting harder for bagging checks. We worked to death trying to feed our sons and daughters. And it's an honor on the boss to be a motherfucking father. If I die, I'll be a stain up on that block. It's getting harder. Let's go. Hey. Let's dive into some of the symbols and lingo used by the gangster cycle. All right, so that's enough. Go ahead, Wicked. What's what, uh, what's going yeah. on, man? What's happening, Yo, man? I, I didn't really like that guy's uh, rap. I'm more of a fan of the <laughs> rap that talks about killing people. I mean, he threw some, he threw some stuff in there at the end, man. I mean, he talked about killing James, so I guess this guy had to get that itch out, you know? Kill something, yeah, kill anything, man. right? He's working yeah. on himself. Mm-hmm. Turn his life around, man. I, am I am I correct in my assumption about the um assertion about the GDs that they're just a bunch of hood guys, criminal gang, criminal oh, yeah. gang Yeah, you're a GD. You're uh, you're. I mean, it's further for me to say that you're a criminal, right? I mean, to whatever degree, you might not be a killer, but if you're hanging around the GDs and you're with that shit, you're with that shit. But you know, what's going I, on, my guy? Yo, yo, what's happening? But you know, I'm over here, though. Ever since uh, Chief Keith, a bunch of these dudes turned BD. But when I was a kid, it was like, geez, all these black dudes were JDs. But then, when I, you know, when I again went to Chief Keith, everyone was a BD on King Dave. Hey, uh, yo, I'm gonna tell you how you, how you see how organized and how group. And neighborhood guys, uh, just send the ops over that way. Let's see how that work out. <laughs> yeah, man. These guys uh, you know, are just gangbangers, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah, them are gangbangers, man. Like, when's the last time? No, no, sorry, can you off? Um, no, no, go ahead. But, but when's the last time you seen an organized black gang? Like, probably back in the days, I'll probably give them, I'll, I'll probably give it to them. Like, ah, probably some of them was organized a little bit. But when the fuck? 2023, we have an organized black gang members. And, None. and let's be honest, too. Uh, you know, these sun men with this glider, they have guns. There's guns in the mix. Everywhere he's going. <laughs> Hell yeah. Without a doubt. Um, and anybody, if, if you look at who's claiming these gangs, man, a lot of these guys are the people we see in these stories we do, man. In the stories right. we do every night, those guys are in gay, they're bloods, they're crips, the GDs. Right. And, and their murders might not be necessarily specifically tied to the gang, but they are gang, 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 nonetheless. Exactly. Hell yeah, hell yeah. A suspected serial killer wanted in connection with a series of murders.